Hi there. Me again, Keith. Good to see you back. Glad you came along. If this is your first one, thanks for coming on board. The video tutorial service, Love Tree, baby. Okay, that's enough of that silliness. Good to see you back. This is video tutorial service number five for July 2005. Five is going to be the one number for today. It's like Sesame Street. Today's, no, today's lesson brought to you by the number five. And I also might do my, uh, my count invitation later. Five, five, ha, ha, ha. All right, that's enough of that silliness. Anyways, good to have you back. Great to be back. I'm having fun with these things. I'm feeling pretty jazzed, pretty excited. Um, got to spend some time with some folks in the last couple of weeks, uh, talking a lot of animation, learning a bunch of stuff, reaffirming a lot of things, getting some energy. It's great to be able to do that. I love going to classes. I love listening to other people talk about animation. I, I just love it. I mean, I, there's no way in the world I'm too far along to learn anything from anybody. It doesn't matter to me. I mean, I, anybody's talking about animation, I'm there with bells on. Really, I had bells. You can hear me coming. Anyways, it was great fun. Uh, I really appreciate the chance to do that. So I want to just you know, bring some of that back to you. So here we are. We're going to be talking about our next topic, timing. Now, timing's a big topic. Um, and you may ask yourself, well, self? That's how I talk to myself. Self? Why did we spit up timing and pose? I, well, because that's what animation is, timing and pose. You get those two things working and most stuff's gonna work okay for animation. So why split them up? Well, one of the things that really helped me with my animation is thinking in poses and thinking in timing, not as separate things that don't have anything to do with each other, but certainly separate things that have their own unique sets of challenges and solutions. Um, pose and timing inform one another very, very much. Um, if you do not have timing in mind when you do your poses, the actions are going to feel like the energy is wrong or the weight's wrong or lots of things are wrong. At the same time, if you do your timing without understanding what your poses are showing, then things are going to feel really off, mostly in the weight area and, and, and in believability. So yeah, they're, they're very much linked. It's, it's, a, it's a great mystery how they feed into each other yet can still be very distinct. The big thing for me with timing was coming to understand how, think, how the traditional animators, you know, the old school guys, came to understand timing themselves. Um, you read a lot of these old notes, and these guys tended to just figure it out. Now, I know you're thinking, why am I spending 15 bucks a month to have this guy just say, figure it out? If I could figure it out, I wouldn't be paying you. Well, that, that's partially true, but there really is not too many tricks to timing. Um, there's not a lot of things you can do. It's, it's just you figure out how long is it going to take. Well, before we get too far down that road, I want to make sure that we understand, we set out the, the road markers of where we're going to con go in our conversation about timing. Um, to me, there's three big things in timing, and then there's a fourth element, which is kind of a pose timing mix-up. We'll get there in a minute. The three big things that have to do with timing to me are timing, spacing, and phrasing. Three big things. Now, before we can figure out what any of them are, let's go ahead and define them, okay? Timing is how long it takes to do an action, start to finish. That's all you care about, start to finish. Okay, from here, pose A, pose B. What is that? We'll call it eight frames, okay? One, eight. That is timing. No matter how you get there, you're going to take eight frames. Now, if you want it to feel different, you can get there in six, you can get there in 10, you can get there in 12, you can get there in one second or 24 frames, you know what I mean? But that's the timing, how long it takes to get from one to the other. And actions have a certain amount of timing. Generally, I mean, we've all heard that walks are on 12. Well, what does that mean? That means a stride, one step, you know, step, 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 step. A good rule of thumb is that a step, step, is on 12. 12 frames. It takes 12 frames to take a step. That's timing. Now, what if you're limping? Well, maybe it takes a little bit more. What if you're running? Well, maybe it takes only eight. What if you're, you know, fat and slow and you can't really move or you're tired? Maybe it takes 16, maybe it takes 18. But you see, a step takes X. The X is what timing is. 
Okay? And how do you figure out timing? Observation, study, getting it up and acting it out? You'll find out a lot of things. So what is this, what's, what's the difference between timing and spacing? Now, spacing, you know, some, you're going to find that in animation, one of the biggest problems is that lots of people call things lots of different things. You know, like ask any 10 people what overlapping action is or what secondary motion is, and you might get different answers depending on where they came up. And it is kind of a bit of the bugbear about animation is that we kind of, we haven't quite settled on the lexicon yet as to what the words really mean. I mean, we kind of all know what anticipation means. Okay, we kind of all know what an arc means, but there's some things that are just not quite so easy because different people have said different things. But generally, anybody you talk to who's from a traditional you know, animation background, I'm going to tell you that spacing is how, or the spacing of images, like how far apart things are in that timing. Okay, so if timing is A to B in say eight frames, then spacing is the flavor of getting there. Okay, not, not so much, let's just keep it simple. Okay, A, B, eight frames. Do you go one, two, three, four, five, six, I mean, did you go zip? Is it, is it a slow in and fast out? Or is it a fast in and slow out? That's spacing, okay, how you get there. So it's still eight frames, doesn't really matter you know, how you play around with it. I mean, it matters because it, it gives a different flavor to your motion, but there's any number of ways to space an eight frame move. You can, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, you kind of, you can, you can space things, think, these things out in such a way as to give motion a kind of texture or a flavor or a hint or an emotion. And we're going to get into that in a little bit and I'll actually show you some examples of it. So timing is, a to B, eight frames. Spacing is, how do you space out those eight frames? Is it you know fast and then slow? Is it slow then fast? Is it slow, fast, slow? There's numbers of ways to do things. So what's phrasing? Phrasing is timing and spacing in context. Let me use this example for you. I mean, all this stuff sounds kind of esoteric, so let's go ahead and nail it down in ways we understand. Let's imagine that animation is a language. I like to use this allegory a lot in this analogy because it helps me understand how I'm, how I'm thinking about things. In language, we have basic building blocks of what we're doing. We have words, we have sentences, we have paragraphs. Um, let's go ahead and just apply that to words are words, you know? They're, they're individual frames, as it were, okay? And in sentences is how you put those things together to make a statement. And then a paragraph is making many state statements to make one grand statement, okay? Leading to a point, which eventually this video will get to. Anyhow, let's say, let's pick a sentence. Bob went to the store, okay? Bob went to the store. How many, how many words does that take? Bob went to the store. Hey, remember, this lesson is brought to you by the number five. So it takes five words to say Bob went to the store. Now that's a very robotic way of saying it. There's no spacing in that. Bob went to the store. No spacing at all, okay? It's just Bob went to the store. It sounds like your, your computer's reading to you from a text file. It's creepy, you know, it's a robot voice. And it makes us unsettled because we're used to spacing. Okay, so let's take a look at spacing in this little, okay, this, this, is, this is timing, okay? It takes five words to say that sentence. No more, no less. It's always going to take five words to say Bob went to the store. Always. Unless you add another word in there, it's always going to take five, okay? Now, that's timing. It's always going, your move is going to be what it is, A to B. Now let's talk about the spacing. Bob went to the store. That's one way. Bob went to the store. 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 Went to the store. You, you kidding the idea here? Still five words, still one sentence, but the way you say it 
the way you space it, where you put the emphasis, where you linger and where you rush, has a lot to do with how it's perceived. That's the power of spacing inside of timing. Now your timing has got to be right, but the flavor, the character comes through in the spacing. Okay, That's where the soul is unleashed in our timing. Because it may take only eight frames to turn a head. What are you going to turn that head? Fast in the front or fast in the back? I mean, what is it? How are you going to get there? There is a lot to be said. Okay, now, what's phrasing then? Well, we've got Bob went to the store. There's one sentence. And how we go ahead and put those things together and how we say it is our spacing, meaning how far apart, you know, which way do we go about it. And then phrasing is taking a bunch of sentences and stringing them together to get to a point. Remember in an earlier video, I said that poses have to build up to kind of the pose, you know, that mountaintop example that I had. Well, phrasing is basically changing, I'm sorry, basically saying structure your moves so that there is a mountaintop move. There's an emphasis move, okay? So, give me an example. You could make things move very, very quickly and then stop and settle down. And then that's changing the pace. You know, that's like fast, 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 slow. That's phrasing. Okay? So this move can be quick, 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 slow. Quick, slow. Slow. Quick, 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 slow. You know, that's, that's phrasing. And you do these things in such a way as to lead people to a point in your scene. Okay? Um, and then it's the editor and the director's job to put all of these scenes together to have even a larger narrative that has a, a flow or a phrase or a pacing to it. And that's what they mean. That's what they talk about when they, you know, when they say, "Well, the pacing of the film." You know, does everything feel rushed? And that's the thing. Is, is your shot everything feel rushed? Does everything feel slow? You know, you got to play with these things in context. Put fast against slow to build yourself up to a point of emphasis. Okay. One of the cool things that helped me understand how to work on my animation is to think of, uh, in working, I mean, because you get down to it. Okay, look, get right down to how does, how does Keith work? How do animators work? Because a lot of times folks write me and they say, yeah, could you just tell us how you work? I am, but you might not be paying attention. So here's what I like to do get my scene, really think about it, spend a lot of time researching. I mean, if I, I, recently I got a scene at work. I spent three days planning it. I had two and a half weeks to get a lot of stuff done, but it was really important scene in the film I'm working on. I mean, it, it's like it had to work. And there's no, you, the, the shades of hitting it or missing it were not very big. I mean, if you fell off a little bit, the whole thing wouldn't work. So. It had to be very fine, so I spent a lot of time thinking about it. Did a lot of reference, did a lot of video reference, studied it, thought about it. I did pages and pages of thumbnails and dialogue analysis and emotional analysis, and I drew out all kinds of things. So I spent a lot of time thinking about it. By the time I got in the computer, I really knew what I wanted to do. The first thing I did was I just put all my poses stacked on one side. You know, I made frame one, pose one, frame two, pose two, frame three. Pose three, frame four, pose four. Why? Because I'd figured out in my planning stage what I wanted to do action-wise, and I knew what those things should look like based off of my reference and all these other things, and which we'll get to that point in a different, you know, down the road in our series. So anyways, here I am, I'm just doing poses and it, drawings, okay? Because in traditional animation, there's no way to just scrub and see what you got. These, those, those cats had nothing to work with except their minds. They'd figure out the timing on the X sheet with the stopwatch, and then they'd thumbnail, and they'd figure out their drawings, and then they'd go over here and they'd draw them. And they'd roll them with their fingers, they'd draw them and roll them, draw them and roll them, just to see how the drawings were playing together. Okay? And so in, in CG, that's what I do as well. I just put all my poses right next to each other in the timeline, and I just quickly go through them to try and find out, well, how's that playing? Is the arm moving? You know, just tick, 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 tick. You know, it's back and forth. Is that arm have a good good arc? Does it have a good arc? So I just keep stepping back and forth between them. And you know, if I get a little uh, uh, then I'll go, oh okay, I gotta go here and fix it. So it's like it's like rolling and drawing. If you're a traditional animator, try it. You'll love it because it's just it's the way you think. So I get all my poses worked out, then 
I'll take all those images, because really that's all I'm doing is I'm spitting out images. I bring them over to a pencil shooter, an X sheet program. You can get free ones online anywhere. And just bring them in there and I play around the timing based off of what my understanding was before. But timing is one of those things you just kind of have to figure out. Like I said, you get up with a stopwatch, you act it out. If you're trying to figure out timing and you're not out of your chair, you're in trouble. If you're sitting in your chair trying to figure out how long it takes to do something, you're screwed. Get up. Get off your butt. Move around. Do stuff. Figure it out. Turn on a camera. The, e the greatest, the greatest tool for figuring out timing is this thing right here, the camera. Get one. Really, even if it's a webcam, just get one. I don't know, they're 20 bucks. Get a camera. Get up, act it out. Take the movie in, the premiere or iMovie or whatever the heck you got, and, and look at it. Okay, how long does it take for me to reach over and grab that box? Well, you can step through it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight frames. Okay, took me eight frames. So you can go over here and you know that your character has to pick up a box. So just as a wild, crazy guess, put eight frames. I mean, you looked at it and you say, well, I can always try it later. Get up and act it out. The weird thing, I love the old notes. Love the old notes of the old guys. I mean, I read the Walt Stanchfield stuff and the Nine Old Men stuff. Go to Animation Meet and download all those notes, read them and love them, because they're great. But one of the things is, those guys don't talk about timing much. They talk about pose, they talk about acting, they talk about, they talk about phrasing a lot, they talk about pace a lot, they talk about emotion and gesture and, and sincerity and believability and heart and warmth, but there is very, very little in there that they talk about timing. Check it out. I mean, go ahead and read it. Look anywhere. And timing. I mean, I, just the other day I saw a book, uh, a guy at work had it called Timing for Animation. Maybe 60 pages, maybe 80, 100 pages. And it was mostly just drawings. And it was very little in there on charts. You know, I mean, I, I was expecting, because it's an old book from early 80s or something. I figure I'd pick it up and I'll be seeing timing charts next to drawings to figure out, well, this is how these guys, very little of that stuff. Most of the timing is just figuring it out. Get up and figure it out. Here's a cool thing about timing. Timing affects the mood of what you're doing. We're going to take a look at three examples, because it's enough of me talking to the camera here. We're going to take a look at three examples uh, of three actions that when you take the same images, I mean the same exact images, and you just play with the timing of how they play out, you start to see the emotional or the character of what's being done changes. And this is, this is important. This is, like, this is like the big secret, at least in my mind. You may be saying, gosh, where's the, where's, where's the secrets in this stuff? I mean, you're not telling me anything new. Maybe I'm not, but here's the thing. Listen, listen. Listen, listen. Okay. If you're going to try and fix pose problems by changing timing, you're hosed. And if you're trying to change or fix timing problems by changing the poses, you're just as hosed. This is why I work separately. I mean, they, they inform each other. That's my planning stage. I think it through. I do reference. I understand it. But then when I'm working in my scene, I get the drawings working, and that's what I do. I poses right on frames, bam, 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 bam. And I roll through them, and I make sure that the arcs are good, and the weight is good, and the, and, the, and the line of action is good, and all the things we talked about pose, that's what I work on at that time. Timing I save. So that's why we're going through the VTS the way I work. I work pose first, get it working, so that those images play together and all those flow lines and all that stuff that we talked about works. Once I get that, then I time them. And that's much more of a kind of figure it out observation thing. And I'll have an idea what I want, but I'll also play a little bit. Timing for me is a playground. I get in there and I'm like, well, I think I want this move to be a little bit quicker. I want that move to be a little bit slower. And I have a phrasing in mind that I want to do. Like I want to emphasize this moment. So in order to emphasize this moment, if I'm slow, 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 I should probably speed up. Or if I'm fast, 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 slow down. Whatever. Whatever I need to do to emphasize that moment with contrast. And that's where I'm going to play around. So what we're going to do is play around a little bit. Take the same images and play around the timing, and you're going to see how the character changes of what we're trying to do. So let's try it out. Start over. 
three, two, one. At this time you should stop the video and have a look at the three movies that are included in the zip package. The Head Turn, The Wave, and The Ball Bounce movies. Those movies are at 24 frames per second, and I did that so that you can study them at their full frame range to see the difference in timings and see how that's reflected. Um, normally I run the VTS videos at 10 frames per second, that's to keep the file sizes nice and small-ish. And so, for these movies I want you to be able to study them at their full frame range and figure out just what exactly is going on there. And we're going to probably do that quite a bit as we move forward and get into more of these timing things. So anyways, pause the movie, check those other ones out, and then when you're done with those, come on back to this one. Thanks. Okay, that was fun. I just wanted to do that. Uh, anyways, I hope that was helpful. Do you see how when we played with the timing? Totally different characteristics. And so when you're working, uh, I would encourage you um, to go ahead and, and try these things. Just make a, a, a simple three frame, a three frame move, you know? A pose, a breakdown, a pose. Just do that. And play around this stuff on your own. It's your homework assignment, okay? You want a homework assignment? I gave you one. There you go. Try it out with a bunch of different things. Try it with the hopping ball. Try it with a character with a head turn. Try it with a wave. Try it with a walk. You know, go ahead, block out a walk. And then play with the timing of how long it takes to go from here to here. And then to really get fun, play with the spacing. Okay? That's where a lot of fun is. Okay? Because the spacing can be. Mm -hmm. There. There's some real fun stuff there. We're going to cover more about spacing next time. Uh, next month, we're going to do some examples like we just did for timing, but we're going to look at them for spacing. And we're going to start talking about weird things like eases, because those are important. Let's go ahead and say what's going down the road, because we're wrapping up this month's video. Down the road, we're going to take a look at some other things. We're, like I said, spacing and easing. Um, we're going to take a look at breakdowns and anticipations, because to me, those are timing things. I mean, the kind of posing, you know, an anticipation, you kind of have to draw it to get it, but what drives the anticipation is the timing of the move. So we're going to cover some of that stuff. Um, the breakdown, what does your breakdown look like? I mean, how much do you push it? Do you do this, do that? A lot of that is dictated by the timing of the move. So to me, breakdown is a very timing derivative. They're the filler space, you know, they help define how you get from A to B, but, you know, how little or how big, a lot of it depends on the speed of the move. And so timing informs breakdowns a lot. We're going to cover that too. Uh, we're going to get into some more phrasing stuff as we move down the road. Um, other things we're going to get into is uh, offsets or overlapping action. We're going to, or as some folks call it, secondary action. If you're from that crazy school, I call it overlapping action, which means it's stuff that just kind of happens or hits at a different time. We're going to get, you know, start playing around with some of these phrasing things. These are, these, this is what's to come in our timing topic. Um, after timing, as I told you before, we're going to get into planning and, and scene planning and thumbnailing and really getting into the character and figuring out how to break down a scene. So anyways, I hope this month has been helpful to you. I hope that you've liked it. Uh, sorry if I talked to the camera too much for some of you folks who don't like me talking to the camera. Sorry if I spent too much time on the computer for those of you who don't like me spending time on the computer. It's funny because I get emails from all kinds of folks saying, could you spend more time in Maya? And I'm like, no, I'll try. And then I get other emails from other folks saying, ah, don't spend any time in Maya. Just give us lectures. Hey, y'all are fickle. What can I say? But I'm having fun anyways. So anyhow, thanks a bunch for playing along. Um, I hope these are a real blessing to you. I'm having a blast doing them. Keep the feedback coming. It's great to have you guys. So uh, have fun. Keep animating. Try things out. And uh, God bless.